Is this on? Yes. Oh, hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Beef. Um, I'm just gonna list uh, a couple of things that have happened with the show recently, in case you um, didn't know. It, it won the Gotham Award for Breakout Series. It's nominated for 13 Primetime Emmys. Just this week, Beef was also named as one of AFI Honoree's top 10 TV programs of the year and received four Critics' Choice Television Awards and three Indie Spirit Awards nominations. So, um, but most impressive of all, I think, are these two lead performances. So let's get them out here. Uh, first, Stephen Young. And please welcome Ali Wong. everybody for coming out on a Saturday morning. Thank you. Um, so the creator of the show, uh, Lee Sun Jin, who goes by Sunny, he told me that the whole series was inspired by a real life sort of road rage incident he had. Um, he obviously did not go to these extremes, but I think we've all, especially living in Los Angeles, had those moments. Um, tell me how the two of you discussed what was interesting about this idea uh, in those early talks, because I know you both came on pretty early to the series. Who to go first? Yeah, how did we talk about it? Well, Stephen was involved first. He thinks Sonny always had Stephen in mind to play uh, one of the drivers. And then one day, Sonny called me, it was in 2020, and he was like, I have this idea based on a real uh, thing that happened about two strangers that get into a road rage incident and then become obsessed with each other. And <clears throat> one of the people is gonna be played by Steven. And I always envision the other driver as Stanley Tucci. <laughs> but now I'm thinking that it would be a lot more interesting if it was you. Absolutely. Yeah, and it was one, it was one of those things where it was like that one of those like Jerry Maguire you had me at hello moments because I was like okay you have me at Sonny's one of those people who I've always wanted to work with I worked with him on Tuca and Birdie Stephen and I both did but I didn't really get to know him I just knew that he was so um, he was so so smart and so thoughtful and that he had so much experience in writing for television. And then, I mean, I barely got to work with Steven on Two Gun Birdie. We played like a, a bird boyfriend and girlfriend. And I love that show so much, but we never recorded in the booth together like once. So I was, I had always been dying to work with Steven. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it kind of didn't matter what the plot was. I was going to say yes. <laughs> I think, I think beyond us discussing anything um, objectively, I think it was just like, we, we got together and then we read some scenes, like not independently, we didn't like go off and read some scenes. We just kind of like the process started. And then I remember when we were in the same room together, I would just look back, we would just nod at each other, just be like, yo, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. There was a lot of like awesome energy and tension and like fun in between us. And I was like, this is gonna be hilarious. Um, and it was, every time we got together on set, it was so fun. Yeah, I remember blast. like, so I was obvious, I was very intimidated by Steven, cause you know, it's Steven, come on. He's like, <laughs> Oscar nominated actor, very, you know, he's like, and I had seen him, um, I had seen Steven, you know, of course we all did, he's, he's such an important person and, and just like the, the community and uh, like, and um, I, I had idolized him for so long and then I remember meeting him at an event after uh, my first special came out and I was so excited to meet him and he was like, I'm so excited to meet you. Yeah. And I was, I was surprised that he was always so supportive of me and everything I was doing. And then I was very, you know, I was very excited to say yes to this project. And then once I got the script and as the, the table read got closer and closer, I started getting nervous. And I was like, oh, this is a huge undertaking. Like, what did I get myself into? And then I think Stephen could sense 
that I was kind of um, intimidated about working with him. And, and on the first day of rehearsal, he looked me in the eye and he put his hand on my shoulder. And he's like, you know, I don't know anything you don't already know. And either he's a really good actor or he meant it. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, I was, I was convinced. And that sort of set the tone for everything. And then, I don't know if you remember this, but I was like, because, you know, Stephen's a very uh, dedicated and serious actor, I was like, and we were playing adverse uh, people who were like in an adversarial relationship. I was like, is he gonna throw a donut at my head during lunch? <laughs> and then, and then we started doing the scenes, and then we were we would just start laughing every time afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's uh, I don't those horror stories. I wonder if they're true or not. But like, I think what I've observed is if you're gonna play antagonizing characters there's actually more love in between scenes. Yes. Because for me, I need to love you so that I can be mean to you on set. Right. right? Yeah. Like, otherwise I don't feel safe. Yeah. But if you know that it's like, um, I, I got to work with another scene partner that really helped me understand this. Like, we were having a big fight scene, and in between the take, she was like, hey, I like you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, word, thanks. And that let me go like, cool, I'm gonna have this scene. Right. <laughs> So that's fun. so true yeah, yeah, like yeah. the word is safe and then it's also like there is like you you're you still want to be there if you're fighting with someone yeah. you if you really don't like the person you would just leave the scene totally but if you want to be there there's yeah. something about them that's like drawing you to them so yeah. it was so fun yeah yeah a beast she Ali's the best she's so amazing so yeah <laughs> These are really demanding, tough characters. It's a lot about repression and rage. And, I, and I'm curious how that affected you as actors on set. Ali had heard that by the end of it, you had like a physical reaction to, there's a, sto there's a story out there that you broke out in hives from. Yeah, Stephen and I both did. He, he had just casually mentioned it to me one day. He was like, I broke into hives. I was like, oh my God, me too. And Stephen's was all over his body and mine was all over my face. Um, we, you know, we shot in LA and I'm used to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a stand-up comic and I'm used to performing at night and during the day just being in my pajamas and being very much like a stay-at-home mom. I, I, I'm used to like making my kids lunch every day and leading a very like regular life and then when the show came along, I wasn't around my kids at all and that was really hard. And, uh, and it was, the, you know, the most challenging thing creatively that I've ever done, you know, but because Stephen was so, like, he always had such a pleasant attitude about everything. He never complained once about anything. Like, that finale, I felt like Shelley Long from Troop Beverly Hills. I was like, where are we right now? Like, I want to go to the bathroom in, like, a regular toilet where the seat is warm and, like, it's so I, it, yeah, I mean, it takes a toll to like 
just constantly every day wake up and go, I'm gonna just be pure rage for a day. Um, <sighs> yeah, that's all I really got is a deep job. Yeah, it's gnarly, yeah. Um, so tell me about inspiration for these characters. How much are you pulling from people you know, your own experiences, and how much is sort of coming just from the page? Um, I think, I think there's certainly people you think about in your life. I think there's a little bit of self-reflection. I think there's also, you know, imagery of things that have come before that we can study. You know, I think like falling down or we, we can kind of point at things to like represent that. But for me in my process, I'm always like at the end of the day, it's, it's like, how does this emotion move through my body? And, um, I just let that happen and then tweak here and there that where it makes sense and um, also like submit to it and go like, oh, that's what I look like with that emotion through my body. I'm like, okay. Uh, and then you accept that and then you put it out there. Um, it, it, it didn't feel like we were like grabbing things from people. It was just kind of like we were aiming, at least in my conversations with Sunny, it was like we were aiming at a collective understanding. Um, of just what we all know or have understood or have felt at some point in our lives. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know, I just really connected with the idea right away of um, Amy being this person who's stuck in a maze of her own creation. And um, <clears throat> from then on, I just, I just always connected with her, whether it's because I saw myself or I saw my friends or I saw my relatives in her, and I think Sonny also put so much of himself into all of these characters, and I think unless you know Sonny really well, you can't, it's not very obvious, but um, I mean, the, the show is really about, it's so much about him, you know, so, um, and, and his, his emotions and his observations, and, and I connected to all of it. Although apparently that urination scene is something that really happened to him, but I guess he's sick. Right? The, the <laughs> a lot of stuff happens the... to some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he has a life. Uh, <laughs> quite a long life. Um, the the there's a couple scenes that I, I I assume a lot of people have seen the whole series since it's been on Netflix for a while now. And there's a couple scenes that really have stuck with me. Um, the scene in the Korean church where Danny has this really emotional breakdown. I'd love if you could talk about what it was like shooting that for you. Um, that scene was uh, something that actually Sunny and I talked about for a long time um, because we both had gone to Korean church. And uh, I would find in my later years, after I kind of stopped going to church, that every time I would go back um, I would just be overcome with this like sweeping feeling of like wanting to cry, but I would just usually stifle it and just be like, just be there. And then um, we kind of posed the question like, what would happen if you just let it go? And so he wrote that in. And then when we were there on the day, um, I came to understand, at least for myself, I don't know if this is exactly what the what is happening, but um, I'm sure there's a lot of nostalgia involved. I'm sure there's a lot of childhood stuff involved, but um, when we were shooting it, we were shooting everybody else to fill out the room. And uh, I remember just being there and they're playing the music and I was like, oh, I'm prepared. Like I'm, I'm like already on the verge of tears. I'm not, it's, it's gonna be great. Then they turned the camera on me and because you know you're isolating sound, um, everybody is just watching, and they're just like stopped. And I'm doing my scene, and nothing. And I'm like, oh shit. Um, and usually, um, uh, I'm thankful for the privilege of many repetitions in this career, um, because I think prior I would have like forced it, and I would have like really tried to work for the people in the room to see me be able to accomplish this goal. And um, I learned that never works, um, or rarely ever does. 
And um, instead, I was like questioning. I was like, why am I not crying? Like, I don't know why I can't have it right now. And so I took a walk. I asked them if they could shoot some B-roll. And I came back like 15 minutes later, and they were ready for me. And my first idea was, I was like, oh, maybe this song is in the wrong key. <laughs> it's, it's the song's fault. Yeah, it's the song's fault. <laughs> And uh, so they switched it for me. Um, it wasn't that. Uh, <laughs> but then what happened was, I realized I was like, oh, everybody stopped singing. And so I asked all the actors in the room with me to sing with me. And I was like, can you sing this with me while, I, while I'm here? And so everybody did, and then I just started sobbing again. And I think, for me, you know, I don't know how this hits other people, but for me, it was like the feeling of like non-isolation, you know? It was um, finally Danny holding onto this story of his, of like how he lives in suffering every day. And here he is in this communal space where like his voice is drowned out and mixed in with everybody else's voice. It's almost like your pain is not separate from this collective experience. And so um, that's what I learned for myself in that moment. I was like, oh, the cry is from everybody else. And that was cool. That was that was it. Um, yeah, and then Ali found that very funny. <laughs> so I, I, lo I love that scene so much. And after we, that, a cut of that episode came out, we had all gone out to to Korean barbecue together, and um, I was like, "Oh my god, I, ju I just watched that episode, Stephen. That scene where you're crying in the church is like my favorite scene." He was like, "Oh, it's gnarly, right?" I'm like, and I was like, "It's hilarious." <laughs> I laughed so hard, and then Stephen was like this. <laughs> so what? And I was like, yeah, it's hilarious. He was like, and then, and then I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then, and then, but then we've had like many discussions since because he, it, it wouldn't have worked if you thought it was hilarious. Well, you know what I think it is? I, yeah. think, it's, I, think, I think both are true. Both are true. Meaning, yeah. like, you can't hold that moment to be so precious because it is also funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you yeah. can't come out of that moment to right. laugh at it, then you're just kind of stuck there too. You you can stay there if you want. I, you're welcome I, I, I to. to <laughs> they, we went to the Gotham's and they played like clips uh, for our nominations, and they played that scene, but not like the beginning, like subtle part of it. It was, was just like, right in the middle of him crying. Just not crying <laughs> ah, in front of everybody. No words. The whole table <laughs> started cackling, laughing. <laughs> I just was, like shrinking in my seat. I was like, why did they choose this clip? <laughs> It's there forever. Um. We'll, we'll put Allie in the, in the hot seat now. Uh, in episode seven, Amy has this monologue with her therapist about being unconditionally loved and if there's a limit to being unconditionally loved that I thought was really vulnerable. And um, it's just mostly a close-up of your face. So what was that scene like for you? Oh man, that was so scary. I uh, have. I don't think I've ever memorized that much of straight dialogue because you know the therapist interjects with how did that make you feel mm. <laughs> but really it's like a page and a half of me talking straight i've never done that before where i've memorized like a page and a half of dialogue that i haven't written myself and i was like so scared i begged jake did i have a, I, I begged jake for a teleprompter and he wouldn't the, the director i begged him to break it up because he told me he was like i'm gonna shoot it like this and then just go to the front. So it was basically, and if you see it, it's, it is like a one -er, basically. And um, I was very, very nervous, but, there, but I had worked really hard to just memorize it. And, I, and from the beginning when Sonny wrote it, I just really, I really connected to it, you know? And I think that's like, I know it's sexy to have some sort of acting process or something, but really I just memorize the words and then I show up to set and I say them. <laughs> and that, that only, that only um, works when you connect to the 
writing and when you're working with such great writing that really does so much of it and you really have to have like a natural synergy and and connection to it emotionally because then you can just say them you know then you can be free to not have to work at it or think about it too much and there was something about that um that that scene that always uh that always carried so much truth to me you know so and I think I thought it was going to be like a zillion takes. And then I think we just did it in like, I think that was the third take or something. And uh, and, and I look at that now and I'm like, I, I can't believe, I don't know who, when I watch Beef in general, I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, since we're in a room full of actors, there's an in incredible supporting cast here. I, I think um, Young Mazzino, who plays Danny's brother, and uh, Joseph Lee, who plays Amy's husband, I'd love if you could talk about what you sort of learn working opposite each of them uh, in, uh, for these characters. Um, um, playing with Young and Joe were, was really, really fun. Um, I think that, I think like just largely what Ali said is exactly how we approached the whole thing. There, there, there wasn't some over drawn out process um, there wasn't like people like brooding in their rooms and stuff like that and then coming out. It was just like straight up like we're just hanging out and then you say the words and then you like experience this experience. And um, in that way, I felt like um, people really showed up uh, with this really great energy. And so things didn't feel like, all right, you stand there and then when you move this way, the camera will swing and then we'll talk. And it was just like action. And um, that was so fun. And the fact that uh, Young and Joe um, were there and present and just like willing to play, um, yeah, I think that was a testament to like all of it. Like just the way that the whole thing was kind of foundationally built. I think Sonny does really have a great care for um, the set. I think um, Ali and I, I know we, we aimed for that too, to like make us, our set feels safe in that way, and um, and then everybody contributed, so it was really great. Yeah. yeah, they're just such a, I think their essence really matched with the characters so well, you know, and um, Joseph in real life is an artist, he's incredible, and I actually had, I was a fan of his work before we shot the show, and um, and then Young, this is like his first big acting thing he's ever done, you know? So he really, and he, they were both just like sincerely very excited to be there. Um, and they just, yeah, they were so professional and wonderful to work with. And, and I hope to work with both of them in the future. As these characters um, <clears throat> sort of escalate in their actions towards each other and everything gets darker and more intense how did the two of you was there anything that you ever worried like maybe this is too far or I don't understand why he would do this or how do you sort of approach these characters without any judgment I guess <sighs> <laughs> um, I think that that is I think you nailed it like I think that was the difficulty of the show is um, you know, there were so many moments for me with Danny where I held um, him in judgment when I approached it. I was like, oh, I gotta do what today? <laughs> like, what is this guy doing? And how do I make this, like, palatable? How do I make this, like, connective for anyone to not completely judge him, too? And, and I think it comes down to that last piece where you're like, oh, it's because I'm judging him. And um, I think every day you just see the way in which Danny's mind creates his own reality and you have grace for that. You have grace for the way he kind of like misunderstands situations or the grace for the way in which um, he reads into things and then makes them come true in that way. And so um, I, I relate to that. I, I think I do that every day. I think we all do that every day. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just like embracing aspects of myself that helped me like really be down for Danny. I think the part that, um, when, when you asked me that, the part I 
think about most is when the script for the finale came out uh because you know episode nine was like almost like an action movie there's like a robbery and have you, oh god have you, if you haven't watched it by now i'm so sorry but i'm so <laughs> for you. you know when and maria dies this like really insane death uh and so much happens and then episode 10 is such a left turn and when i first got the script i was like i don't get it <laughs> but I was afraid of, and then I was like, and then I kind of expressed it. I was like, oh, I, I, I don't get it. And then another draft came out, which was not that different from the first draft. And then everyone, and Stephen was like, oh, this is amazing, blah, blah, blah. I love the allegory of this. And then, and then in my head, I was like, I still don't get it. But I don't want to look stupid. So I'm going to say I get it and be excited, but I really don't get it. But because, you know, this is the thing about collaboration, because I'm used to working by myself in stand-up, and when you collaborate with other people in film and TV, I think it only really works if you believe that everybody around you is smarter and more talented than you are. <laughs> so then you you have this built-in trust, right? And so I was like, okay, Sonny's smarter than me. <laughs> I'm gonna trust that this is gonna work, you know? And so I was like, so, and then it was, uh, and then as soon as we got to set, we started doing it. I was like, oh, okay, I really, and I started like, you know, I was with Steven in that environment. And uh, then I started to really connect to what the finale was about. And then, um, and I was like, wow, I, I, I would have never done this on my own, you know? And, um, and, I'm, and I'm so, so proud of the finale. It is probably now my favorite episode. Uh, so I think just having that, that trust in, in Sunny was really crucial throughout the whole process, you know? Could the two of you pick out a, a scene, whether you're in it or not, that's your favorite of each other's in this series? I have a lot of Ali favorite moments. Um, I love... Is it, for, for me, I'm trying to pick the ones, like, I, I, I'm trying to pick a one that I'm not in with you, but, like, it's okay, I'm right. tied to that. <laughs> like, I love having a scenes with you. I, I think every scene that I've had with Ali, I look back at very fondly, because it was, like, such fun chemistry. Like, it was, like, effortless. Like, when we were fighting in the cars, uh, between the cars, so fun i was like can we do this scene like 40 more times you know or like when you're chasing me down the street there was so much joy um, when you're like i was sore the yeah, next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. she's fast <laughs> she's fast um i think i think i think even episode 10 like carrying you was really fun uh <laughs> yeah before before i would get on steven's back he would go like this you ready <laughs> he wasn't even trying to be funny. He was trying to be supportive by creating a shelf with his butt. Just how was you gonna get there? Um, yeah, like us battling was really like so fun for me. And then watching how powerful you were in that opposition is is kind of the thing that I really enjoy about your performance. Is like. You, you, you don't fuck with Amy, you know? <laughs> you don't fuck with Allie. Like that finger nod, a finger yeah. wave at the end yeah. is like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, so yeah, I, I have a lot of fun memories of Allie's stuff. I, so the church crying scene is my favorite. <laughs> my second favorite is when you are uh, <coughs> barbecuing that meat for young and he's like ignoring you and you're giving him all this unsolicited advice. Yeah. Uh, I love that. And he's just like jacked in the pool. <laughs> yeah. And um, I love that scene. And then my favorite scene that I did with Steven, well, I did love that running scene in the pilot that you guys just watched because that was the first thing we shot together. And uh, after that take, we were just laughing so hard. And we, we had so much fun, and I didn't expect it to be 
that fun. And then uh, in the finale, when we were lying side by side and talking to each other and talking about what a waste it was that we hadn't uh, connected. Um, I just never, I had never done anything like that before, you know, and I really forgot where we were and I really, you know, I just had never experienced that before where I was just really very much, very much there. And, um, and I think that's my favorite scene that we did together by far. Yeah. And Ali, obviously you have this incredible career in comedy, but does this experience change the direction of what you hope to do in the future? I, I'm really open, you know, I think it's, I'm really lucky where I, and I hope that to be in a place where I can just do what occurs to me and what I feel naturally connected to, like with beef. Um, I, I love doing stand-up. It, it, it creates this wonderful life for me where I get to see my children. Um, they go on tour with me now and it's really, really amazing. And I have so much uh, creative freedom, but I, I love doing this show so much, and I really do mean it when I say it was the most challenging and fulfilling and creative experience of my life. And uh, I, I would work with Stephen and Sonny over and over and over and over again. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very open, you know, and if it, it just has to be something that I really connect to. But yeah. I think we're going to wrap it up, but I'm going to end it with a cheesy question. Um, I'd love. If the two of you could talk about what you learned from the other about acting, since we've got all the actors here. I learned from Ali how to, how to, I guess, really love yourself through the process of, of this work. Um, she kind of, what, like her vibe and her energy through these spaces are always just kind of like full and like overflowing with with um, joy and love and connectivity um, whereas before my process really used to just be like let me just go in my hole and then like I'll appear on set and then I'll go back into my hole and um, I wasn't like that on Walking Dead but like in between I was like that and um, it was really nice to connect to Ali in that way, to be like, hey, you can just like be here and <laughs> hang out. And um, yeah, yeah, that, that was really, really important for me. Yeah. Uh, I very much learned from Stephen how to be tough, you know, because he was always, that hibachi scene was not easy. You know, like he, he, I mean, Stephen doesn't talk about this, but he had like a, it was so dry, he had a split lip afterwards that was cracked. If, if that happened to me, you would not be able to stop hearing about it <laughs> every day and demanding, you know, like moisturizer and lip balm galore. But he just, he never complained once about it. So I learned from him how to be tough because he was so t tough throughout the whole production about everything. Um, and then I really learned from him as an actor how to to just show up as yourself, you know, and that you don't need to think of it as you're playing a character, but to just like, to just really be that person and not think about it too much and just, and just show and be brave and how that takes like a lot of courage to do it. But once you do it, it that, that's like most of the work right there. Well, you're both incredible, and I appreciate everyone uh, for coming out today. Let's give them one more. <laughs>